Hello, this is Prevaricate, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. Hi, we're going to be decoding a uh, Gogler keyless padlock. Um, I wanted to show you first what's in the vice is actually one of two that I've already decoded, but what I wanted to show you is what we're going to be doing here. So as we're manipulating the labyrinth inside and the stylus is writing on it, on the hinge side of the shackle, what we're going to be looking at is movement from inside the assembly that the uh, that the stylus is attached to. We're going to see as the stylus moves up and down through this labyrinth, we're going to try to uh, determine, uh, we're going to see movement on the inside here, and that's going to tell us whether the stylus is moving out or moving inward. So let's see if I can get a little bit of light in there. So you can see that little tiny bit of metal in there, oh my goodness, I'm not used to doing this on camera, that little tiny bit of metal in there is what we're going to be watching. I'm going to try to get a closer view, um, but first we're going to break out the padlock that I received, um, for which I do not have a combination. So this one came uh, off eBay, and you can see there's a pretty decent chance that we're going to be able to see in here, but we may need to do some cleanup to possibly see that. You can kind of see the assembly in there a little bit already, but we may need to do some cleanup. So I'm going to mount this, and then we'll come back. Okay, so the process here is we have taken the code on the shackle itself. 2238 and what's provided by Gordon uh, G. Wines 2001 at uh, key picking. This is likely a right, left, right combo. So, what I'm going to try, um, this one spins totally freely around. Um, so, I'm going to try zeroing it all the way to the right, like two or three turns to the right. And then we're going to take it um, a full turn around to the right and note um, where that assembly seems to. Uh, go up and go down in the mechanism and then try a depth first search where we're going to take the largest such movement and then uh, reset try that one and then now go to the left and then note again and then take the largest such from that so we're going to reset that 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 so I, I think you folks can see what's going on because this has numbering on the dials I'm going to use those for convenience, but otherwise you could just keep track of clicks from whatever zero point that you choose. So, let's try that. Okay, you can see a little more clearly the mechanism inside here that assembly that we're going to be looking at. I apologize I don't have a light mount so this is probably going to be very difficult to see movement but I think you get the idea. Okay I think we have a setup that allow you folks to see what's going on. First you can actually see inside here um, that little assembly and you should be able to see it uh, tilt back and forth basically as we move this dial here. Um, so as I explain I'm going to start by going uh, I've already zeroed this so I'm going to start by going right and noting up and down positions and usually just approximately you know small movement, big movement, all that kind of stuff. So you can see right there that that was sort of a big upward movement um, because as the stylus moves up, this little assembly is going to rotate this direction. So that's sort of what we saw. So I'm going to make note of that at, we're going to call it 18, using the absolute measurements again. So I'm going to go ahead and zero that out. You saw that movement downward. And you can actually see that up and down in there, which is great and encouraging. So I didn't notice anything like that movement at 18. 
there is a small one happening here at 8, which I will note that that is small. And then normally they're not that obvious. So uh, right now we've gone up at 18, so I'm going to start going back to the left here and see um, what we find there. Small, tiny movement up there at 14. Looks like another kind of smallish movement at 10. That's a much larger movement. You can see right there at 8. And then we went back down, actually. So as I'm going through and noting large or small, one of the other things I'm trying to do is keep track of kind of an absolute idea of movement. So like there may be a couple small ups here, but the actual trick is you kind of want to feel a cumulative movement of it. So that was a big down. And then sort of as we rotate, we can see any other movement is down. So because we've gone uh, the full rotation, now I'm going to zero out, and again, 8 was the most promising upward movement in that. So we're going to try to zero out. You can see that thing moving. And this is definitely the widest tolerance I've, I've seen. Most shackles are not this. This cutout is not so wide. So to 18. And now we're going back to 8. Let me try to get the light back in there a little better if I can. Shoot. I'm sorry we had this light situation so good. Okay, now I'm going to try to go back to the right. And so, I don't know if you saw the shackle moved, and there was that um, resistance that I would expect as if we were um, uh, basically releasing that spring inside, releasing the locking pollen so the shackle might open. So, I'm going to try that. Um, sometimes we get lucky. Yep, there we go. And that is open. All right. So one of the other ways I tried to decode this originally was um, if the visual gaps are not very tight, but you can get a tiny little shim in there to try to act as like a little flag to go back and forth as you go. I found that a little hard to do. Um, I also tried kind of a shim thing using as another stylus, just lightly touching. And then, you know, if it moved kind of this way, the stylus would get pushed this way. And if it moved this way, it would go this way. Those were not so reliable that I found, but um, thankfully it seems like a lot of these are decodable um, like this. So just to zero out again, so we found out that translating, it was 18, 8, and 2, right, left, right. So as that translates, I believe that is actually going to be, oh, I can't remember how to count these. Um, I think it is 9, 5, and then... Goodness, 9, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So yes, indeed. Our combination is R0957. I hope this helps you decode any padlocks you may have laying around. Thanks.